Hey, I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory, and I have some good news to share this week. This is going to be a shorter video. Definitely tune in next week. I'm going to be doing a longer video on the drug that's at the very top of my list of possible treatments that need to be developed for human use. Uh, this is a drug that I think is going to really help with chronic pain and fatigue and cognitive disorders. It's called dextronaltrexone. And so uh, check that out. It's a very interesting pharmaceutical agent that I really hope that we can develop into a treatment. But for now, let's talk about the good news. And that is we got our last approval that we needed to run our leukocyte infiltration of the brain scan. If you've been following my work, you know I've been looking at this for years. It's taken many years to get through all the development and all the regulatory approvals. And now we have them all. We just got our FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration approvals. And so now we're allowed to run the scan in actual patients. Now we had already run it in four healthy controls. So we did that a little while ago because the FDA asked for us to demonstrate the safety. So we had done it in four people on the planet. Now the fifth one that we're about to run is going to be an actual patient. So this is a really big deal. If you wanna see more about the scan, um, you can check out a video that I did. This is number three in the series. And it's called Tracking uh, Leukocyte Infiltration of the Brain. And I'll also put a link to it at the end of this video so you can find it really easy. You can see uh, pictures of the brain scan and my hypothesis behind how this works. It basically, allows us to track leukocytes, things like T cells and B cells, if they breach the blood brain barrier and enter the brain and cause inflammation because leukocytes really shouldn't be in the brain. And so if we run people with things like myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, chronic fatigue, and we see these leukocytes in the brain, that's a really good indication that we have kind of nailed down what's going wrong, which is a pathological uh, interaction between the peripheral and the central immune systems. So yeah, definitely check out that video. And in the meantime, let me tell you how we got, uh, well, I'll tell you how, I, how we got the approvals and I'll tell you what we're gonna do next. Again, I don't want this to be a very long video. The way we got approvals, just to give you a little kind of behind the scenes information. It's funny the way the FDA gives approvals, they have a clinical hold procedure. And uh, what happens is, you know, FDA is all about safety. So we prepare a huge packet, of the radiology team prepares this packet with all kinds of safety information and showing how the process works. And then FDA reviews it and they ask for additional information. So they'll say, hey, you need to run four healthy controls, show us how it works in people without any disease, show us that it doesn't cause any kind of side effects, make sure that the scan works as intended. So whatever they ask for, we, we do it, and then we prepare a response packet and we send it to the FDA. The interesting part is once you send off that packet, the FDA is federally required to send a response within 30 days if they don't want us to go ahead. So it's called clinical hold. So once they receive it, they have 30 calendar days, including weekends, and I think holidays as well. They have 30 days to say, no, you cannot continue. We're putting a hold on this, which means if 30 days has gone by after we send the packet and we haven't heard anything, that means we're okay to continue. So it's one of those rare cases where no news is good news. So we have now gotten past 30 days and the FDA has not sent us anything, so we are now good to continue. So it's a it's a good process. Uh, it's funny. It's different than most regulatory bodies. But I imagine, I don't know how long this has been in place, but I imagine they put it in place just to ensure that things go really fast because it means that there has to be a response in 30 days or it continues. So uh, it works. So anyway, what we do next is... Uh, my part, which is I have to find the perfect ME-CFS patient to be the first ever person or first ever patient to undergo the scan. <clears throat> so I've got to find someone who, first of all, is a prototypical ME-CFS patient. 
So they've got to have profound fatigue. They have to have post-exertional malaise. They can't have other conditions that could be causing their fatigue. And then they need to be close to UAB. And I'm going to pick someone who's done my scans before so I know that they're, they're comfortable with the uh, scanning environment. <clears throat> and then we'll run it and we'll see what happens. This is a case where since we'll be able to see where the leukocytes go, we'll see whether or not they're in the brain. So we know the scan works. The question is whether my hypothesis was correct. It's either going to be a major finding that's going to be extremely important in the field, or it's going to be nothing. It just depends on whether I was right or not. And we'll know the answer uh, pretty soon. Now, of course, we may find something else because we'll, we'll also scan the rest of the body. So we might find something we weren't expecting, like something unusual in the spinal cord or something else in the body, or maybe the leukocytes are circulating in the blood more than we expect. I, I have no idea. So we may find something unexpected and, and interesting, but in terms of my hypothesis about leukocytes infiltrating the brain, it's gonna be a yes or a no, I think. So we'll know the answer uh, pretty soon. Now, what else are we gonna do? So after I run this first one, we will, of course, analyze the data very quickly to see what we have. Do we have exciting news or not with the first person? Then we'll run some more. So uh, I don't think, in fact, I'm quite sure that not every MACFS patient is going to show this leukocyte infiltration in the brain. And that's because I think the MECFS definition actually contains a few distinct pathologies or a few distinct diseases that have the same label. And so I don't expect all of them to have the exact same thing wrong with them, even though their symptoms are quite similar. So we're not going to put it all in one patient. We're going to run a group of them. And then after we run about probably five, we'll take a step back, look at all the data and figure out what do we have here. And then, of course, I will update everyone as soon as we have news on whether the hypothesis was correct or not. Uh, then we're going to test some other conditions. Uh, we're going to do multiple sclerosis first. And that's because, you know, multiple sclerosis is a, is a disease where autoreactive T cells get into the brain and attack the myelin sheath of neurons. And we're quite sure that's what's happening, but no one's really been able to show that before. So we want to run the scan in MS to show what does it look like with the disease where we know those T cells are infiltrating the brain and causing problems. Now, after multiple sclerosis, um, it's kind of wide open which conditions we'll want to test after that. Fibromyalgia would be a good candidate, uh, major depressive disorder, lupus, long COVID. Those are four possibilities. And so kind of depending on what we find, uh, that may dictate which other conditions we pursue after that. And that's really a, that's it. That's the news. And that's where we're at. Now it's up to me to go back to work and the radiology team and start running this. Pick out the patient, run the scan, analyze the data, find out what we have. So hopefully we will now have a way to truly visualize the pathology of diseases like MECFS. We will be able to show, look at this right here, you can see it, these cells are not supposed to be here. This is why this person is feeling so bad, why they have so much fatigue, why they have so little energy. It's due to this problem with inflammation. So again, check out the earlier video if you want some more background and want to see some more pictures about this scan. Uh, keep an eye out for more updates on this channel. I will do a video as soon as we have something in interesting to share. I either way, whenever I get some results, and I will see you here again soon. Thanks.